welcome to another episode of the How to CEO show. Today, I'm delighted to be speaking to him from Global ID. Uh, please introduce yourself and, uh, and what your company does. All right. Thank you for having me. My name is Vadim. I work for a company called Global ID. It's an identity management platform for self-sovereign identity. Um, I manage the product delivery team, the credentials platform, and now the offering for the TradFi customers. So that's traditional finance. It's, it's a new term that's been coined uh, fresh, uh, hot off the press. Uh, some call it CFI to distinguish it from DeFi, but uh, there's still quite a lot of opportunity in TradFi. And so we're definitely tracking and uh, seeing how Web3, Web3 ideals and ideas uh, are actually applicable to traditional finance. Um, I also have um, a venture fund, the Monthly Ventures. We invest in consumer-based um, uh, products and services. Um, and I'm also uh, helping out other uh, VC funds um, uh, looking for the next generation of fintech startups that are um, catering to Web3 uh, ecosystem. So what should CEOs know about the Web3 ecosystem? Well, what is Web3? For that, you have to answer what is Web1 and Web2. I mean, we are defining this as we go along, right? Uh, but the latest is the following. So if you think about Web1, it's like the early days of the internet. It was all about static bulletin boards and somebody out there controlling the information that you have access to. What that means in terms of identity, our digital identity, well, nothing much. There was no such thing, right? The famous saying, you know, nobody knows you're a dog on the internet. Um, and what does that mean for financial transactions? Well, during very early days, actually about 20 years ago, I, uh, I integrated uh, Mal's something or other. It was the first credit card uh, plug-in for websites. So that was the state of the art back in the day. And then comes Web 2.0. Web 2.0 was about interactivity. This is the Facebooks of this world. This is the bulletin boards that are updated by users. This is the Craigslist. Uh, to a certain extent. What does that mean to, um, to identity? Well, there's a simple federated identity where you log in and every time you go to a new uh, service, you have to log in there as well. You essentially create a digital footprint, a digital identity at that, at that particular um, content provider. And oh, by the way, they control all of your data and you have no choice in how your data is being used as we're finding out recently. What does that mean to financial transactions? More interoperability between different payment, pro payment providers and wallet providers. What's the next thing after that? Well, it's when people control content. It's when we start owning the content that we produce. It's about digital right management. It's about NFT where you know you can, what you own and what you can prove that you own. What does that mean? What does Web3 mean for identity? Well, that means that we own our identity as well. And we get a say, perhaps for the first time ever, what happens to, the, to our data, to the data that belongs to us, the data that we, data information and content that we produce and data information about us as individuals. You no longer have to trust somebody else to manage your uh, identity, to manage your personal identifiable information. For the first time ever, Web3 promises that you will be, as a consumer, you will be in charge and in control of who gets to see what about you. And of course, DeFi is this new term out there, stands for distributed finance, which also means that we control our funds. We no longer have to rely on a, on a centralized third party to, to say what we can and cannot do with our financial means. So that is Web3. So if you think about content, it's from static to interactive to ownership, and that really translates to identity and finances as well. And so what's the business opportunity out of that? What are the business opportunities that are coming out of this, uh, this new way of thinking about identity? So well, first and foremost is that the whole notion of self-sovereignty and the distributed uh, content is that it has to wait for nobody. So there is no single uh, point of contact. There is no single uh, big player that controls the adoptions of, the of this technology. So as a company, as a business that wants to cater to that community, you really have to find ways to adopt, to see where the trends are and how to adapt to make it easier for consumers to be, number one, secure, number two, protected, and number three, also compliant with certain regulations that are still being put in place 
even in this new world. So it's about uh, following trends. It's about providing the right kind of experience to consumers and to the businesses that are catering to those consumers so that this notion of owning your own content, no, own, owning your own identity is not as burdensome as it, it, it seems at this point. So can you elaborate on the um, trends? Um, so what are some trends and business cases that, uh, that have been early adopters of this? So I like to talk about identity. That's kind of my bread and butter these days. So the trends are towards self-sovereignty of our data. So if you think about kind of the, the economy of, of uh, identity, on one hand, it's uh, federated identity, right? You entrust somebody to hold all of your data and they give you a key to basically prove, to authenticate who you are. So for example, Facebook has all the information about me, what I like, who I'm friends with, who I've dated in the past, and they've given me a key to prove to them that it's actually me controlling that account. And if I log in, they say, oh, well, you know what? We believe that we suspect it may not be you, so can you please prove again? And every time I have to go and I have to ask, may I please have my information? And with recent regulation, it's become easier to actually request Facebook and all the others to do that, to reveal what they actually know about me. The next, the other side of it is self-sovereignty, which means that I control my identity. I don't have to ask anybody else for storing my identity or asking them what they did with my identity. Everything is on my device or on my phone or um, uh, or on my or on my watch, whatever it is that the token of my identity now represents. And owning our own identity means that we are not only have the power to share things about ourselves whenever we feel like it, we also have the responsibility to maintain access to that identity and maintain um, maintain uh, maintain this identity as something that others can leverage when they need to. So with that power comes a lot of responsibility. So that's really the, um, the, two, the two very high level um, ideas about identity in Web3. Federated identity owned by somebody else versus self-sovereign identity owned by consumers. And what are consumers using this for initially? Are they using um, it to buy cars or houses or NFTs or is it being adopted by people who find it difficult to get other identity or other credit. What are those consumers doing with this? Well, today it's mostly about federated identity. Every time you mm -hmm. buy a car or buy a TV, you essentially have to identify yourself. You have to verify yourself to whoever's providing you that service. So every time you fill out that, that piece of paper that says, here's my name, here's my social security number, here's my uh, credit card number, every time you have to repeat the same process over and over again. What if there was an easier way? What if you were to store this information somewhere that could be trusted for access later? So you can just share your credential. And oh, by the way, there's also a use case for sharing that credential digitally, not just over the counter when you walk into a car dealership. So today, for the most part, it is federated identity, but we hope that in the future, uh, self-sovereign identity and other uh, distributed identity services would help consumers to prove who they are uh, repeatedly with uh, a lot more ease than it's done today. Who else do you see um, is very active in this space and on where can people find out more? Oh, there's a lot of things uh, happening. Uh, for the first time ever, we're starting to kind of coalesce around some uh, technology standards for self sovereign identity. Um, but the biggest, the biggest challenge for the community right now is to provide really good user experience tools, user experience services for, for users. So it's not so much about whether it's self-sovereign identity or distributed identity or digital identity in general. It's about making that identity usable because what, what good is it if it's really cumbersome and complicated? And maybe that's just the, the first step. Uh, this is how Web 1 was, uh, was very clunky. You had to dial in, you had to put the CD in before you put it on your, on your wall and cover your wall with them. Um, but eventually, the web became a usable, a usable entity, a usable service. 
So we're going through those growing pains right now as a community, trying to provide the security of self-sovereign identity with the convenience of a digital identity that could be used every day. Um, and we've seen some companies out there that are uh, gaining market share because they are providing easier solutions for identity. Um, of course, their success comes with a little bit of a, of a caveat um, in that, that uh, they, are, um, they are simplifying the verification process. They are uh, not as transparent to the user for the user's sake um, uh, because the user doesn't have to know everything that happens around them uh, that is used to secure their identity or share their identity credentials. But we hope that as the, uh, in the future, and we hope that Global ID will play a big role in this, um, we will provide a high degree of transparency to the user as to how their identity is verified and how their identity is shared and who gets access to it. What are some companies that are gaining a user traction in this space? Um, a couple of companies. Um, they're not necessarily doing this the self-sovereign way, but if you were to ask me about this question in terms of the adoption of digital identity, there's a few names that come up for sure. Uh, there's a company in the U.S. that's been in the news recently for, for interesting reasons uh, called ID.me, for example. Uh, this is something that most of us have experienced when we went to, uh, to get our driver's license. Um, the new driver's license, you had to submit your, uh, your information through a digital means uh, through a company, ID.me. Um, I would consider them a federated identity provider in that they are taking your data, they are helping you verify it through their services, uh, through their subcontractors, and then they're facilitating transfer of your digital identity to other service providers. And uh, because they were kind of the first to market uh, and they've been working on this for, for decades. Um, they're first to market and they have gotten some market share with the government agencies. Um, for more interesting use cases, I would point out a company called Yoti uh, in the UK. Um, they're gaining traction through, um, through use cases such as age verification. Um, uh, and they're gaining market share because more and more consumers are, are downloading the app that they can verify themselves, for example, in a nightclub, which is a lot more pleasant way to exercise your right to provide your identity than going to get a driver's license. Um, there's also a company uh, called Bonify, uh, which is a credit union uh, service organization that is looking at adopting uh, self-sovereign identity for, uh, for the use of uh, credit unions uh, so that they can increase inclusion of, um, of the services uh, rendered by credit unions. So uh, not, not a small undertaking by any means. Uh, and what they're doing is uh, definitely the first in their field. Fantastic. If people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Aha, well, glad you asked. So Global ID is actually more than an identity provider. Global ID is an ecosystem for trusted engagement. Because um, you know, what's, what's, use, what's good your identity if you can really use it? So if you sign up with Global ID, you get a handle. My handle is VS, just like early days of Twitter. You know, come get it before it's it's uh, before it's too late. Uh, and you can find me at global uh, .id slash vs. You can message me there, uh, but first, of course, you're going to have to make sure that um, you're you're verified that that um, you can represent yourself as um, using digital identity means. So I'll respond uh, to anybody that uh, contacts me there. So global .id slash vs. Excellent. Thank you very much for being on the show. I'm Mo Newton. You've been listening to another episode of the How to CEO Show. I'll see you next time.